While working on a show this year, the crew chief called Vince gave me a gift. Now, Vince travels a lot. Uh, he travels all around the world, partly working and partly for pleasure. When he's not working, he just gallivants all the time. And he goes to places like China and Japan. And one of the things, I'm not sure where this came from. I can tell you the price was $28, but I don't think it was American dollars. And this thing is a power bank. And he got one with a bear theme, although, to be honest, I'm not sure what the creature is inside. Let's uh, open this up and explore it. So uh, let's uh, cut that seal and get it out. Right, first thing I'm noticing here is that uh, what looks like a children's toy with a plastic bag over its head is a bit disconcerting. It's maybe setting a bad example here. Uh, mummy, mummy, can I have a plastic bag over my head? Yes, you can. Wait till I get the cable tied to secure it in place. So off comes the plastic bag revealing... Ooh, it's very Japanese, isn't it? It's very strange. So where's the lead? Oh, there, there we go. Ah, you rip its skirt. Oh, blame me, I have just ripped its skirt off. Oh, let's rip its blou blouse off completely. Oh, it's got cable ties. So it's got a power bank module, but does that extend into the head? How is this secured in? I think it might be worth... Um, cutting that cable tie and seeing if that's what secures it in. It's a bit strange. I'm guessing really ultimately it's not a children's toy, is it? It is a power bank for adults. That looks like a... Oh no, it's actually got a... It's got a furry rectum and the sphincter or whatever they call it is uh, cable tie reinforced. Oh, so what's this cable tie doing? Uh, let's uh, snip that cable tie out there. And we'll check out the power supply. Does the power supply still have a charge in it? Should check that, shouldn't I? Had this for a wee while, awaiting its moment. Partly because it was slightly perplexing. Uh, this feels like open surgery on a creature. This is not vet ranch. Is that going? Oh, right. Oh, okay. So. Oh, now it's looking more robotic. Is this not a f Oh, no, it's not a fairly standard. Ah, loud, reassuring pop. Okay, so I think we can guess so far that this is uh, based on a couple of 18650 cells with the circuitry based in here. Let's plug something in to see if it is powered. Does it still have a charge? No, it doesn't still have a charge. I'm not really surprised it's been... Sitting for a while, let's check the voltage across the batteries. So technically speaking, that kind of makes it serviceable, doesn't it? I'm just checking here in case there's like bags of cocaine or something stuffed inside for... Yeah, you could kind of smuggle stuff in this, couldn't you? I feel a bad sticking my fingers up it like that, it just looks a bit weird. So, two cells. Are, are they a, do you recognise the brand here? Oh, and there's the little electronic module just pops out easily like that too. So let's uh, check the voltage in these. And see if it's uh, anywhere near a sensible level. So we'll turn that to 20 volts. Range, negative in this end, positive in this end. It's showing about 3.4 volts, which means the, the cells are actually holding up quite well. Uh, the circuitry on board is based on... Ah, uh, let's uh, take a look at that chip. TC4056A. Now, that's the charge control chip, isn't it? The TC4056A. Um, so what's actually doing the boosting? Oh, it's actually all discrete. Look, it's got the, it's got the boost circuit here with a component marked B3P46 and then it's got, oh, it's tiny text. It's got a little six pin package. Oh, let's zoom in on this. Let's uh, zoom in. That's the best bet here. And I'll even sort of try and get it into focus here. So um, it's got that little package there that looks as though it's switching the inductor. Do you think that is uh, a battery management chip? 
8209, 8205, that's, is that not a dual MOSFET? Uh, so what's the other side then? Oh, it's a DW01. So that's a DW01 in this side. That's the battery protection chip there. Uh, and the other one, the other side, is the MOSFET package for protecting the batteries. So this must be doing the boosting bit then. This must be the what's actually running the boost circuit, or is it? Or is it that little chip there? I think I'm going to have to investigate that and see if I can find what that is. Uh, one moment, I'm just going to investigate and see if I can find what this is. OK, it was quite hard to find. The nearest I could find in the end was by typing in... I found uh, links to that chip, but they were just sales links. This under here, I'm just going to clear it, whatever it is. It's screws, that's what's under there. Uh, there were sales links to the chip, but then they also to the partner chips, the BP32... Uh, what was that? BP... That was the BP... B3P46, I could find the B3P26, so I looked it up, and it's part of a range that it appears to be lots of different chips of this, a similar numbering, but it's a very simpler range. You've got the battery, you've got the inductor, um, the diode across the switching device, uh, then the smoothing capacitor and the output, and then the output. So that's what it appears to be, a dedicated boost circuit. So this uh, little module is based on, it's very modular, instead of, Instead of the modern approach you'd have in, say, for instance, the uh, power banks like these, where it's just one chip does everything, in this case it's got the separate chips for the charging circuit, this classic uh, 4056 uh, charging circuit, which is set the resistor uh, to uh, charge this at 800 milliamps when it's charging from the micro USB port. And it also controls the two LEDs. The battery itself is protected by the classic DW01 and its matching dual MOSFET, so it can tr it can protect against overcharge and over discharge. And then it's just that little booster circuit that has steps up to five volts. I've checked the standby current. Now the specifications for this are that it charges at eight hundred milliamps, it discharges at a maximum of uh, five volt one amp. And uh, the standby current, I put a meter in series with it and uh, just checked the standby current. It was 35 microamps. That's actually very good. It's very low. Um, and that's about all there is to say about it. There is one rogue component I wasn't quite sure about. Uh, there's an extra transistor here. I'm wondering if that's actually for lighting one of the LEDs. That is probably what it is. It's lighting the LED under load, isn't it? Because that's uh, going to be able to be used to switch that uh, blue LED... Uh, which is the charging, which is the discharging? I've kind of forgotten now. Let's uh, put it on to charge and see. Actually, no, it'd be easier discharging, so I'll just uh, hold this wire on here and stick. In fact, I'll uh, plug this in here first. Stick it on. Yeah, the blue LED lights to show it's discharging. And the red one is connected directly to the uh, 4056 to show it's charging. I'm guessing that transistor is just purely to detect when the, there's a load and to light the blue LED. That's all that can really come to mind in that. I can't see any other function of it uh, in the connection to other components. And certainly none of the other components has the facility to uh, in drive the blue LED at the, uh, in that function. So I'm guessing that is what, it, what it's for. So it's very strange to see such a modular approach to this. And uh, it's also quite nice that you, technically speaking, you can put this in a box, the back of its box, and just use it as a, a standalone power bank. Or you can actually reassemble this because it's not being glued or sewn together. Uh, it's actually got the, you can put a new cable tie in around the neck and then pop the neck in once you put the battery block in. Actually, I think you'd do it the other way. You'd put it, uh, you'd put this in with all the padding down there. I'll probably pull the padding out. Ugh. It's probably asbestos. No, it's not. It's just uh, that usual uh, fluff. So this would go in there. Poke through. You'd put the cable tie in that little sleeve there and tighten it round its little furry electronic butt. And then you could feed the cable tie in the other bit. So you could actually open this up, maintain it, reassemble it, uh, and pull the cable ties and it would be fully... Uh, functional again. So there is a possibility to put new uh, batteries in if you so desired. Um, 
So, you know, the, it seems quite a good quality little device. It seems quite smart. Not really much else to say about it other than the surprise that it is so modular as opposed to the, the all-in-one sort of approach. I wonder uh, if that's just because it's an early design maybe or, you know, maybe it's a, a original design that was uh, made for the function of building into toys. Ooh, its mouth is really creepy for some reason. It looks like you could put cigarettes in there. Mm, not sure that'd be terribly beneficial. But yeah, I don't know if it's just because uh, it's been based... The original design was be, be, was done before basically all these fancy all-in-one chips came out, or if they've just uh, done it this way because it gives them more control and maybe just a, it gives them more options in terms of functionality. But it's quite smart that it's got that uh, modular approach and uh, the fact that you can uh, reassemble it completely without any sort of special tools other than just a pair of snips and cable ties.